Chapter 1070, the strongest form of humanity is out and Luffy has become the angry god, which I manifested, right? He's gone full eater of worlds, Galactus. Am I right? This guy's devouring planets. I'm calling it now. Luffy's going to devour the moon or something by the end of One Piece, right? We're going to see something crazy. We saw him do some pretty wild things like chewing on a piece of brick and then shooting it like bullets. You know, he's going full Toon World, baby. He's going full Bugs Bunny, Blue Eyes, Toon Dragon. We got Luffy, the Toon King right here. What do you guys think of this cover story? Because this one's pretty juicy, right? We got the mad scientist. We got everybody you could imagine. But something that's been going around the community is that I've been seeing that there's a lot of talk of who that woman on the right might be. My guess is that it's probably Stussy, right? That is the most logical conclusion, but it would be pretty sick if it ends up being Sora, Sanji's mom, because if it's Sanji's mom, maybe we'll see how uh, his mom and his dad met, because it is kind of an odd pairing, right? Like Sanji's dad doesn't seem like he knows a thing about romance or love, right? He's so cold hearted. Anyway, guys, hit that subscribe button. Make that my Merry Christmas gift, right? I got a new Luffy shirt. And I got my uh, Santa Claus hat, so uh, happy holidays to those that don't celebrate, but Merry Christmas if you do. Uh, we're gonna make this uh, review uh, short and sweet, right? We're gonna get right into it. This chapter had it all once again. I am so impressed with how Oda can continue to fit so much story into like 17 pages, right? It's insane. I don't know how he does it. We get a whole lot more action. We get more lore dumps on the Devil Fruits, and we get the arrival of the yellow pheasant, Borsalino Kizaru. He is here, he is on Egghead Island, and it is a great time to be a One Piece fan. Let's get into the chapter, which is an absolute showcase for Gear 5 and the Seraphim, right? We get to witness how broken these power users are, right? Um, we have some new top tiers in the verse, officially. We got the, the Gear 5 Luffy, and the Seraphim, right? And the Seraphim, if I had to place the Seraphim on a power scaling list, a power scaling tier list, I would probably put them, you know, somewhere around that first Yonko commander level, right? I, I think they're around there. If that's too high, too low, let me know in the comments what you think. I don't do a whole lot of power scaling um, on this channel. I've done it a few times, I dabbled, right? But um, in One Piece, we all know it's a little bit tough to power scale, right? At the end of the day, it's whoever Oda wants to beat who, right? So, but um, it would be interesting, you know, to, to get the community's perspective on it. Like, where do you think the Seraphim power level wise are? Are they first Yonko commander level? Are they at admiral level? Are they Yonko level? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. But one thing's for sure though, is that Luffy is in fact Yonko level. I don't care what anyone tells me, right? That can most definitely not be argued anymore. The man, Luffy, simply just no diffed Rob Lucci, who now has an awakened mythical type zone thing going on, right? I don't even know if he's mythical, but he's awakened. And this guy was already strong. Now he's even stronger. He broke through Sentomaru's defense, which was supposed to be the absolute defense. So he's getting a lot of hype that he's become a monster, right? Like he, he has leveled up tremendously. Um, and Luffy just made him look like a joke. Luffy made him look like a clown, right? And we're gonna get into gear five and everything, but um, one other big note on the chapter that I wanna talk about real quick is the whole Boa Hancock situation, right? The S Snake, right? The uh, Boa Hancock's Seraphim. Um, it seems that S, -Snake, S Snake's ability is the same as Boa Hancock's, but it can mean two different things, right? Because it looks like her ability worked on these adult Marines, Marines, I was about to say Marine Admirals, Marines. And um, that can mean two different things. Either A, the ability isn't solely based on, you know, intense attraction. It could also be based on cuteness, right? Because this, this Boa Hancock's a little girl, right? You get what I'm saying? So it's like when you see an adorable puppy, right? It's in our nature, you know, no matter who you are, Unless you're a sicko, right? If you see a cute little puppy dog, your mind instantly goes like, aw, 
look at the little puppy. You know, it seems, I, I would assume that it would work the same with small children. Like if you see a little baby, you're like, oh, look at the cute little baby. Look at the little baby. But option B is the other option. It would be much darker. Um, it can mean that the the Marines are strongly attracted to a, a, a child. <laughs> And yeah, I wouldn't read too much into this, right? Uh, I don't think that was Oda's intention to, to get us thinking about that too much. But hopefully he does clarify this in future chapters because I'm I'm kind of uh, a little confused, right? But, eh, whatever. But anyway, back to the chapter. The chapter pretty much ends with Luffy defeating Luchi and escaping to the upper levels of Egghead Island. So he, he's, he's, ma he's making it to the rooftop finally. But, um... Luchi, he soon wakes up, and due to his awakened zone, right, when you're in an awakened zone, you have like a super high level healing factor, so you can heal from injuries almost instantly, which is uh, pretty wild. It was one of the first things introduced about awakened zones, which are the first awakenings we ever even heard of, but you know, obviously back in Impel Down and everything, but anyway, Luchi's awake, and somehow, some way. They got control of all four Seraphim. So that's one part of the chapter that kind of threw me off a little bit. And let me know in the comments if I'm reading too much into this. But if Luchi got knocked out, it's just Kaku and Stussy and Sentomaru's still conscious. Then why? How did it end up with them getting all four Seraphim, right? I'm pretty sure four Seraphim can defeat Kaku and Stussy since Luchi was knocked out. So I didn't really understand that, like some a few minutes passed and then all of a sudden Sentomaru's like dead or something? I don't know what happened there. It was a weird, it was a weird transition, right? It all happened so quickly. I don't know, I just don't see Kaku and Stussy defeating four Seraphim, right? I can, we, we can all agree that the Seraphim are at least some type of Yonko commander level, maybe, you know, third Yonko commander level, at the very least, I think they're much higher than that. I'm just saying, for those doubters, the, the, the haters that are always like, like downplaying every new character, right? Um, they're at least Yonko commander level, so there's no way they're taking out Kaku and Stussy. But that's just me. Maybe I'm missing something? Let me know in the comments. We also find out that Bonnie's true motive is to put her father back to normal. Right, she, she's tired of him being an android. She wants to touch him and hug her daddy, right? She misses her daddy. Do you remember that panel? It's iconic. And it really threw me off. I was just like, huh? When I first saw that panel. But yeah, guys, um, this is what it's all about for Bonnie. She wants to bring her daddy back. She went to Egghead Island to find Vegapunk so he can do what he needs to do to turn Kuma back into a human, which I really hope we get to see something like that because uh, Kuma's always been such a mysterious character that I do hope we get to see, you know, how he really was, you know, before he got turned into this, like, you know, mindless robot that still has some, you know, ounce of humanity left. But still, I want to see the real Kuma, right? The tyrant. If he really was a tyrant, we, we will see. But anyway, and the final panel, baby, the final panel. Admiral Kizaru is here. The rematch of the century is upon us, everybody. Sabaody Archipelago. Sabaody Archipelago Part 2. It's going down. We're going to see some brand new abilities from Kizaru. Awakenings have been such a huge thing these last few chapters that I doubt we will not see Kizaru's awakening. The God of Light will be unleashed upon the One Piece world. And will, will, will we see a mythical awakening of Kizaru? We'll just have to wait and see. <laughs>